Hello and welcome back to another video on our topic on functions and graphs. Today we're going to be looking at the first big thing for these two and we're going to be looking at functions. And in particular what we're going to be covering a few key aspects when we say what a function is and a few other important elements to a function. Now, we did introduce functions a little bit at National 5. You might have seen them to look something a little bit like this, where we had f of x and it equaled some sort of equation, for example, x squared plus 1. We call this here a function and we denote it by the letter f. Now, what's in brackets is the term of our function. So, f is expressed in terms of x. Now the formal definition that we're going to say here today is that a function relates, it's a terrible R, relates a set of inputs. Now we talked about sets in our last video. If you want to go check back on what sets are, then be sure to go and look up on that. So it relates a set of inputs to a set of outputs. with each input uh, with each input related to exactly one output so we're going to go over what we mean by this definition so we say that a function relates a set of inputs to a set of outputs and we'll visualize this by saying that the set of inputs is called and this is a very important word here we say that the set of inputs is called the domain and the resulting outputs is called the range and we'll visualize what I mean by this with a little diagram. So right here I've drawn a diagram where we've got a little circle in here and we've got another little circle over here. In this circle here we have an element x. Now x can be any number. We'll just call it x for this example. Now what we do when we put x into a function is we get a brand new number by substituting x into this function. So to do a little example, if we said our function f of x is equal to x plus 1, our input would be x and our output would be x plus 1. So for example, if our input was 1, when we apply this input to the function, we get the output 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. So 2 would be the output. But we'll do this a bit more formally just by using x and f of x. So x is what we input and f of x is what the function will give us at the end. And we call the set of inputs, as we said here, the domain. So we say everything within this circle is going to be the domain and everything in this circle is going to be the range. So we said the range is the set of resulting outputs when we plug in a value x. Now, as we said before, a function is usually denoted by a lowercase letter. For example, f or g, sometimes you might even see h. And we use these letters to define a formula and they usually come of the form f of x but you might also see f of y and what this means is whatever this output is or this function is it will be in terms of this letter in here so for example our x plus one another example might be y squared plus three y minus two these are all functions and we call these things here the input now, as we said, the domain is the set of all possible inputs to a function. So, it must be possible to evaluate the function 
for any element of the domain. So what we mean by this is for any element in the domain, it must be possible to have the function give something in the range for each element. So in our example, f of x equals x squared plus one, all our elements of x should give a resulting output. But this is not necessarily always the case. For example, we are not allowed to divide by zero. So functions involving fractions, the domain must exclude numbers, which would give the denominator, which is the bottom part of a fraction, to give the value zero. So if we have a function that looks something like this, let's say our function f of x is equal to three over x subtract five, our domain must exclude any numbers that will give the bottom part, the denominator of this fraction, the value zero, as we cannot divide by zero. So our first restriction on domains is that we cannot divide by zero. And you can try this on your calculator. If you substitute x in our case as five, we will get five subtract five on the bottom, which will give us zero. So we cannot divide by five. So we would say in this case that the domain of f uh, is expressed formally as now here's where it gets a bit confusing because if you remember we said the domain is a set so we need to use our notation about set and we say that the set of the domain is x to be any number and because it can be any number we can say it's any real number because we can substitute any value in here we can do fractions we can well, rational numbers we can do whole numbers we can do integers so x can be any real number but, and this is where we put our, uh, our colon, so after this colon, this is where we say the restrictions. So in our case, x cannot equal 5. Now, how do we work this out? Well, what we do is we simply set the bottom part of this fraction equal to 0 because we don't want it to equal 0. So we put a little line through here to say that this cannot equal 0, and we just rearrange adding five to both sides says that x cannot equal positive five. So our domain for f is x to be any real number, but x cannot be equal to five. Another restriction on the domain is when using real numbers, we cannot evaluate an even root. So for example, if we have a square root or a fourth root of a negative number, we cannot simply do this. So the domain of any function involving even roots must exclude numbers which would give a negative number within the square root. So if in this case we have a function Let's call it f of x. Let's say it's equal to the square root of 7x subtract 2. We cannot take the square root of a negative number. Again, if you go and try this in your calculator, you won't be able to do the square root of a negative number. So again, here, another restriction we say is we must use, uh, we cannot do the square root of a negative number. Another way of saying this is that whatever is inside here must be greater than or equal to zero. So to work out the restrictions on the domain in this case, we say that we must have seven X minus two to be greater or equal, greater than or equal to zero. So if we evaluate here, add two to both sides, we get seven X is greater than or equal to two. So x must be greater than or equal to two divided by seven. If we divide both sides by seven, we get this restriction on the domain. So remember we said x is the value of all the, the domain is the set of all values that x can be. In this case, we say the domain of f is, and we're doing it formally again. So the domain is a set and again, 
x can be any real number, so x can, is an element of any number in the real set, where, so this is our little restriction, we say x must be greater than or equal to 2 divided by 7. And this is our restriction on the domain for our domain of f. So we'll do a proper exam style question right here. And the question says a function g, so instead of f this time, we said that it could also be g. It's the same thing, just instead of f for function, it's g for function. And the function g is defined by g of x. So x is our set of elements that we're inputting. And our function gives us x minus 6 divided by x plus 4. And we are asked to define a suitable domain for g. So what we want to do in this case is we want to find the set of elements that x can be, but we also want to look at the restrictions on the domain. Now, we've got a fraction in our case, so the first restriction we're going to look at is division by zero. We don't want to be able to divide by zero. So our first restriction is x plus four cannot equal zero. So if we rearrange to find out what x cannot be, we find that x cannot be 0. So therefore, we say the domain of g is, and we have a set here, and our elements are x. Now you'll know it's probably always going to be the real numbers. There's not any restrictions on it being a, a fraction. So it's okay for it to be any real number. And we can put our little colon here where we say that x cannot equal negative 4. And this is the only restriction we have. We see we've not got any square roots or fourth roots. So therefore, it's x cannot equal 0. And this is our domain of g. So we've looked at the domain now. Now we're going to look at the range. And in particular, we're going to be looking at identifying the range. So some questions might say to us, here's a function, tell us what the range of elements is going to be. And if you remember, we said that the range is the set of all possible outputs. I think I'm going to write that actually, just so we remember it, because it can be quite confusing to mix up the range and the domain. But we say that the range is the set, again remember it's a set, so we're going to be using our curly brackets when we're talking about range in examples. So we say it's the set of all possible outputs. So I'm just writing this so we remember it. So we'll take an example here by saying that we have a function in terms of x, and let's say our function is just x squared. So what we're doing with the domain is any values of x, the function is simply going to square those elements. So we can see that because we square all the elements, we are not going to get any negative numbers. We know that any value or any number squared will always give us a positive number. So we know that the range will not have any negative values. An easier way of visualizing the range is by drawing the function. So if we sketch our function here, which y is the equation f of x, which we said is x squared. So this is our graph of y equals x squared. We can see whenever we substitute an x or any function of x, we are going to get that the output will always be a positive value. It doesn't go down here. It's always above the x-axis. So we know that our outputs are all going to be positive values. All the values along this line are what we call the range. So in other words, really, y is the range. So if we consider the graph, we can say that the range, the range can be stated as, and we say f of x is greater than or equal to zero because any value we substitute in as x will give us a value greater than or equal to zero. However, this is for any value of x. We also need to note that the range 
could depend on the choice of domain. So for example, if I give you this function and I tell you that the domain of f of x, so in this little example here, we'll say the domain is, let's say um, it is x, can be any real number, but x must be greater than or equal to three. Now this is a given domain. The domain, if we were just asked to state the domain, we would say that x can be any value. But if you're given a domain, so in this case, x must be greater than or equal to three, then the range in this case would be equal to f of x is greater than or equal to nine. And this is because the lowest value x can be is three. So three squared is nine. X must be greater than or equal to three. So any value you pick for x will give a number greater than or equal to nine. And this would be our range in this example here. So like we did with the domain, let's do a quick question. This question says a function f is defined by f of x equals, now our function gives the result sine x, and we're told that x can be any real number. Here we are asked to identify its range. So let's take a look at the values that um, sine x will give us when x is any real number. Well, the easiest way to do this, as we said, is by sketching the graph. So in this case, we've got a sine graph, which we look as like this. And if we remember, we said our range is the set of values y. So it's all our numbers or our values will get along this curve. And if we take a look at it, we can see, well, it can be any number between minus one and one. For example, if it was 0 0.5, we've got that here. And we've also got that here. If it's say negative a third, we know it's going to be down here. So we know that it will always give us a value between minus one and one. So in this case, we would say that the range is, now what is it gonna be in this case? Well, our resulting of our function, our range is going to be between minus one and one. So how do we write that? Well, we say it's simply greater than or equal to negative one or less than or equal to one. And this would be our range in this example here.